The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. Repent. What is repentance? Days and days of lectures could not tell you all that is in this word. But it is an important word. And you are called to do it. And if you have not done it and do not continue doing it, it is the evidence you have never known the Lord. I was preaching at a very large youth conference, about 5,000 young people several months ago. And it was the most frightening thing I have ever seen in my life. The preacher that preceded me got up and proceeded for the next hour to make fun of sin, to tell jokes, to cackle and do absolutely everything that a man of God should never do in a pulpit. And then he gave the invitation and 3,000 kids came forward, popping their gum and giggling and poking at one another. And they went back into the counseling rooms and people were declaring it to be one of the greatest moves of God they had ever seen. It was just a bunch of kids doing what they've been trained to do ever since they were in Sunday school. No tears, no repentance, no broken hearts, no weeping over sin, no self-hatred, no realization of offenses against God given, nothing. A move of God? I think not. Because when God moves, and particularly when God moves to save, there is repentance. Now, what is repentance? The word means to change. Let me ask you a question. Have you changed? And here's something very astounding about this word that we're going to talk about quite a bit this evening is that it's a present tense imperative, repent, and so is believe a present tense imperative. Do you know what Jesus is actually saying here? The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Now spend the rest of your life repenting and believing. Do you know that most people, and many of you, you treat salvation as though it were a flu shot. I did that. If we were to go around today and visit homes of all kinds of fine Baptists and Methodists and other evangelicals, we'd find that they had done, did that. Preacher, don't worry about me. What? I did that. What did you do? Well, I did that. I repented. And I believed. My friend, if you repented and believed only in past tense, you're lost and going to hell. There is an initial work of repentance and an initial work of faith that continues on for the rest of your life and that repentance grows deeper every day and that faith grows stronger. He said repent. Now what did he mean? He meant change. Change from what? From a life without God. Do you realize that most people, even most professors and confessors of Christ, are practical atheists, which is the worst kind of atheist? They're practical atheists. They would never stand up in a congregation and say, I'm an atheist and I deny the existence of God. But their life, their life is a manifestation that they really do not believe that there is a God before whom they stand and to whom they are accountable. Do you call yourself a Christian and yet God is nowhere to be found in your life? You live in absolute independence in your own mind from God. God is not in your morning. He is not in your afternoon. He is not in your evening. God is not in your thoughts. He is not in your heart. God is not before your eyes. He is not making decisions for you. He is not directing you, leading you, guiding you. He is not convicting you, disciplining you. No. You run like a wild dog cut off from a leash with no one to reel you in. My dear friend, that's evidence that you have never been born again. You have never been born again. He said, repent. We do know ever since Adam, our father, what was his great goal, that Adam of ours? Well, it was to be God. It was to be independent of God. How many people today treat salvation and Christianity like some accessory that they wear with the rest of their clothes only to be put on on Sunday morning or during some religious activity? That's not Christianity and that's not repentance and that's not faith. Not at all. Not at all. You see, we're an independent lot. 
We walk in our independent arrogance, in our arrogance, independence. Is his word a lamp unto your feet? Does it direct you daily? Is the spirit leading you? Because that's one of the evidences of the sons of God is that the spirit leads them. Have you repented from independence? And are you clinging unto God? It means to change your mind and your attitude towards sin. To change your mind and your attitude toward God. Have you done that? The sin that you once loved, do you now hate or do you still love sin and practice it whenever you can sneak out from the view of another? Has your mind changed with regard to sin? Do you love all the stuff the unbelievers love? Do you? And do you practice it in the name of Christian freedom? And if anyone ever comes up to you and tries to correct you, do you call them a legalist? Of course you do. That's your greatest defense, isn't it? 